would like to begin by recognizing and acknowledging that we are working and learning together on the traditional territory of the Nakazli Waten First Nations. Fort St. James is a small town in the north central region of BC. We are surrounded by five First Nations communities, including Nakazli Waten First Nation, Tlazdan Nation, Vinche Waten First Nation, Yakuche First Nation, and Takla Nation. We are also known for our beautiful lake, Stewart Lake, our ski area called Murray Ridge, our provincial parks, and our outdoor recreation. Fort St. James Secondary School is comprised of roughly 70% Indigenous population. Therefore, it made sense in the design of this project to look at some of the major historical barriers that have led to the destruction and marginalization of the local culture, and how we, as a community, move forward towards cultural revitalization and mending historical wrongs. As such, we focused our project on the truth and reconciliation process. Concentrating on truth and reconciliation created a means to deeply engage our students into the wrongs done and help them to try to make sense of why they happened and where to go from here. We were honoured by having the support of local Aboriginal knowledge holders, school district staff, administration and our students, which made this incredibly complicated yet meaningful legacy wall a reality. Presented in this documentary are some of the stakeholders for this project who worked with us to make this a powerful and enduring educational experience. My name is Guy Prince. Uh, my real name is Francois Prince. I, I belong to the Beaver Clan and I'm here from Fort St. James here, um, Nakas Lee Territory. My name is Leona Prince. I'm the school district principal of Aboriginal Education for School District 91. I'm a member of the Lake Babi Nation. I come from Nakasli, a member of the Laksamasu clan, which is the Beaver clan. Um, my lineage actually comes from Fort St. James, a descendant of Chief Kwa and Stiche, and so back at home. The aim of this project is twofold. First, encourage our students to examine the significance of the truth and reconciliation process using a cross-curricular inquiry-based learning model. Secondly, students will then share the most important part of the process that resonates with them by designing and creating a portion of a feather to be permanently mounted on the entrance of the wall of Fort St. James Secondary School. So one of the things about, um, about um, bringing forth truth and reconciliation, I guess you can call it like in, in, in English, um, would be to just show people the translation to how the cultural aspect is. And one of the interesting ways about that is just the system that the First Nations have or the cultural system is, um, hasn't been recognized before. So if you put forth um, truth and reconciliation information on anything, all we're doing is promoting the culture. So uh, if, we can, if we can bring more cultural knowledge or more cultural competency to staff and students in the school, um, it not only brings forth an identity, but also does put forth that truth and reconciliation where culture is recognized for what it is. I'm actually really excited about this after getting a short overview of what this project will become. I think it will impact our system in two ways. First of all, our students, you know, the biggest stakeholder, the reason that we all here, the reason we walk. Um, I think what they'll learn is that you can look at Indigenous pieces and Indigenous histories and learnings um, from many different places. I think it's incredibly important for them to see it not as just history and for you to teach them through um, computer technology and then through wood carving. I think just those multiple, multiple modes of learning will solidify that learning and they'll take so much ownership over that. And so you start with reconciliation and you have these experiential learnings in place where they really, really take ownership of it. I think if we just teach it in the one way, then they don't sort of incorporate that into who they are as people. But I think the more and more you can repeat a message in three different ways, I think that's gonna be incredibly important. It's brought peace you know, unity, um, balance, all of those things that are connected not only to the culture but to education itself. 
we, all of the teachers and staff and, you know, um, adults in this education system have created an environment for the children to learn. Every one of the children that worked on the project, students, have families that they've brought home the information to. And they, in turn, spread it to their families and to the other communities. Even something as small as one panel representing a clan member. And the clan member actually represents 10 different nations in the surrounding communities. So one panel has the information that actually reached at least 10 communities around here. So that's one thing that I, I really see a deep, strong connection with the panel that's at the entrance and for education and all the people that were in favor of this project. I believe that the project has created a great understanding with students and within, all, within staff and the school as a whole. I believe it is very important to uh, engage with the students with the truth and reconciliation. Um, it's a great start to provide the knowledge and understanding within them. And once we provide that understanding within them, we're going to be moving forward in a positive direction with truth and reconciliation. It is a, it's a, it's a big project, definitely, but a little goes a long ways, I believe. The connection this project has made in the school and the communities has been a very powerful um, start to, uh, to the real truth and reconciliation across the country and across the, all the nations and even the world. The small part of, say, one classroom that creates um, a project like this, especially right in the entrance of the school, in the whole education system. It shows um, what you're going to stand by and what you're going to represent in the education system. The truth piece of it is everyone was so honest. Truth and honesty are, are similar, but not always the same. Um, truth is that, that act. And the honesty piece, which I also think we're exemplified through this process, was that people were living their truths. So you can tell the truth and then you can live your truth within an honest way. And every voice that I heard, whether in person through interviews or as I read on the panels in the wall, everyone was being honest and living their truth through that process. This project helps students learn and engage with the curriculum that surrounds truth and reconciliation because they became more aware during the social studies class. When the topic of residential schools came into the class, we were into the COVID-19 lockdown. It gave me more time to do excess research and more reading on the chapters we were studying. Even if I did the bare minimum of what we had to learn, I would still be more educated prior to looking into this topic. I find that it's the same situation with the project where not only did we get to learn more about history, but we got to visualize it in, on our own circumstances and be rewarded by having it be put on the school wall for everyone to see. I, I went very surface level when I was introduced to this project and I talked about the different subject areas um, that were that were utilized in order to carry out this project. But in thinking more about it, um, I, one of the pieces that really stood out is that not only are we engaging students' minds and, and having them to stretch their ways of thinking about one particular topic in different ways, but we're also very holistically is gaining, um, engaging them emotionally. So having that heart-mind connection, and for me that's very important. That speaks to our core competencies in what we're trying to do. So not only are we engaging very directly with the curriculum um, that we're tasked to help our students learn through, but also those skills and those emotional and emotional pieces um, and those physical pieces um, of our core competencies. So in thinking more about it, it's very holistic, um, speaks to the first people's principles of learning. And because fundamentally this is grounded in those perspectives, that goes a long way 
in promoting truth and reconciliation because um, you're coming at it from those multiple perspectives, considering so many different things. I mean, the depth of the layers of things that are being done through this project can be talked about and thought about for years, and I think it will have a profound impact. And, and I still um, think that this will shift the way, and projects like this will shift the way in which and how we teach things within BC um, Public Schools. I talked a little bit about this before, um, you know, uh, bringing connection with the students um, and the people and the land, you know. And one of the things that is really powerful in our culture is um, wood, the trees. And uh, it's so powerful that we actually um, call our greatest, um, our greatest clan leader who controls all the clan. We call him Keohodachan, and Keohodachan is actually translated to the standing trees of the forest. So, you know, the, the connection to the land is represented in this, and those feathers is a material, like we believe strongly in feathers because feathers in our culture are materials used in two worlds, in the physical world and the spiritual world. So we're not only connecting the different cultures of the world by bringing the wood from all over the world, you're also bringing a connection to the spirit world and the land and the people. And that's just an amazing thing. It helps the students build a better understanding. So when we start somewhere and then it goes outwards, so when the students are able to understand, they're going to be able to understand within their home and within their community. And every one of those students that represent um, part of this legacy is going to echo all of these teachings through time, where it's going to be um, a part of their identity. Every student that got inspired to learn and to involve themselves with hands-on learning is something that they'll never forget. And it's something the education system will never forget because now it's a part of history and it's a part of our future.